Hello, Namaste everyone. We have with us Dr. Guru Raja sir to take us through this Guru Bhoda session seven. Uh, I am Dr. Janardana Vihebba and I am the convener of this program. Dr. M.B. Guru Raja sir has been uh, courteous enough to keep on leading us with his uh, knowledge tidbits and he is there with us uh, for this session. I cordially welcome you, sir, to this program. Namaste, sir. Namaste, namaste, Dr. Janardhan and uh, rest of the people. And Dr. M. B. Guraja, sir, is a professor in an Ayurveda college, and he, he is also the owner of Dhawala Pentacare Ayurveda Treatment Center at Shumoga, Karnataka. He comes with an uh, experience of more than 20 years in Ayurveda clinical practice and also teaching. Going right into the topics, so it is regarding the psychosomatic disorders. So first, first question is uh, physical diseases which manifest due to underlying stress. We keep on coming across, you know, varieties of disorders, largely the gastrointestinal disorders, or it can be fibromyalgia or the body ache. So uh, you know, they usually go to many doctors. They they take treatment for the physical compliance but they may be having some underlying stress or you know, mental components uh, which is contributing to this uh, physical manifestation. So how to decode this and what is the right approach, sir? No, always uh, there is a possibility that mind involved in most of the conditions. That's the reason of late every disease is being coded as psychosomatic, psychosomatic, the new branding has been started. In Ayurveda, it's very clearly said Mana as Ubhayendriya, which is present in the track of Jnanotpatti as well as Karma Sampadana. For both the things, Mana's involvement is a must. So whenever there is an involvement of Manas and if that is disturbed due to very other stress, stress factors, so that all leads to physical diseases. So what is actually stress is? The stress is the fear of failure. The fear of failure in maybe in health, maybe finance, maybe education, maybe another emotional attachments or family bondings or failure in parenting, whatever it may be. So all these failures are unable to cope up with the speed in which the surrounding atmosphere is running, then the person feels stress. So when that stress appears, automatically it body gives triggered response saying that there is some alarming situation so to overcome that alarming situation bodily so many agnis will release their entities the hormones will come into play so many factors will play their role so ultimately body is in an emergency situation because of your stress factors ultimately that leads to lot of uh, diseases which are basically uh, physiological in nature or it's only for the sharira but involvement of manas plays a very important role to manifest many of the stress converted into uh, totally what we can say that psychosomatic disorders. It may be gastrointestinal related or it may be even the fibromyalgia or even it may be headaches or so many factors are there. All of them will have the particular play role of uh, manas is there. So we need to keep that manas always in a cool place. That's why we always say that uh, whenever we say swastha, so definition of swastha goes in that way, it includes even the tranquility of the mind is also one of the important factor. So we need to understand that. Yeah, there is an interesting uh, research uh, conducted in Germany saying that most of the people of Germany, they have one or the other hyperacidity or gastritis uh, or bloating or constipation because they want things to be in one certain way. They do not, they, they have kind of a set of rules to follow and they, they try to follow the rules very diligently. Uh, so because they want everything to be, everything to go as per their expectation. So I mean, this stress that you speak, that man manifests in many different uh, conditions. It can be temporary as a student approaching uh, his or her exams, or it can be just that, you know, I mean, they, they have a certain rules uh, or they have certain expectations from life or 
uh, their investments or their profession or family members so that you know so stress has many multifaceted ways sir to exhibit definitely that's the reason these are stress factors is actually a causative thing for many diseases and it is generated because of our misjudgment of the life misjudgment of the things there are a set of rules which we need to follow but doesn't mean that everybody has to fit into the stringent format and it should be number one we cannot be number one in everything so we need to understand this and everybody's life is different from one another we don't want to compare with the others we should not do it so such type of attitude will definitely lead to a lot of stress so comparison running fast and all these rat races will definitely cause a lot of hardship to the body going a little deep into the stress and depression uh, in particular you know modern uh, science they talk regarding serotonin how serotonin in the in the brain and optimum level of serotonin in the brain wards of stress whereas uh, the same serotonin if it is secreted excessively or if there is an imbalance in the gut it will lead to excessive bowel mo mo mobility and so that's how stress and anxiety and depression associated with the, uh, the, the digestive system is explained. But here in Ayurveda, we explain stress in terms of uh, pitta, sadhaka pitta and also the you know, pachaka pitta in the digestive system. So entirely where the modern system targets the serotonin and you know, how to balance that, we in Ayurveda give equal importance to the pitta dosha mainly and you know vata and other things which are involved in the stress and also the body components simultaneously definitely sadhaka pitta has a role to play because the sadhaka pitta is situated in the heart we say that and where even manas is also situated definitely they are interlinked and they are very closely placed that's the reason many a times many diseases in ayurveda which are explained based on this agni will role play i mean that agni also has a role to play then it is in the form of pitta that sadhaka pitta as well as pachak pitta has their role to play in every disease manifestation that's the reason we come across many diseases where agni involvement mandagni is there and all these components are there provided even still somewhat something like you can say that the triggering mechanism is also there with the help of mind so something which is in a little format can be blown into an extra uh, exponentially uh, bigger one by the involvement of manas so we need to be uh, careful and handling our manas in a very cool and um, you know what do you guys call in a tranquil way so that that will be beneficial for the uh, leading a life in a healthy way it has happened with me a lot that the the patient will not uh, express uh, exclusively come for the under the tension or stress relieving or the anxiety or the depression that they have but they will be presenting one of the other physical symptoms, you know, like, like you uh, enlisted, it can be like tension headache or migraine or sleep problems or digestive problems. Then I make an analysis that you know, probably the, the underlying stress, uh, I mean, I just ask questions to them and get, get their response regarding this amount of stress that, that they have. Sometimes it so happens that they have stress, but they deny it. But to counter that, I would uh, prescribe something like Manasamitra Vatakam or uh, any such uh, uh, stress relieving, uh, relieving things into the uh, treatment protocol. But they again come back and say that, you know, they read in the internet and come back and say that, you know, why have you given this? Uh, because I do not have any stress, but why you are going in the route of, you know, treating my psychological problems, which is not existent. So have you come across any problems uh, like that? or? If the client, if you think that the client has a stress component, uh, do you try to convey the message or you know, how do you handle that? Uh, my approach to these type of diseases is a little bit uh, in a varied fashion. I suggest my patient to be cool. And I say that they'll come to me with saying that I have a lot of stress. Then I suggest to them, accepting that you have a stress itself is a big stress you are creating in your body. Don't accept that there is a stress. You are cool. You are normal. Say 10 times or 15 times or 100 times per day that you are good. You are cool. You are happy. If you are conveying these information to your body in other subtle mind, then automatically things will settle down. If you are accepting that there is a stress, 
you are in some new corner of mind you are feeling that you are not well you are not right there is some stress and you want to overcome it and then unable to overcome that stress then you are feeling in a depression and leading to a lot sort of stress related issues and diseases so first thing is in my approach usually i suggest my patient to don't say that you are having stress whatever it may be let it be but don't accept that you are having stress be cool and say that you are fine you are happy if you are repeatedly say that you are cool or happy or nothing there is no problem as such then everything will settle slowly in their line so that is the reason my approach for this type of things is that don't accept that there is a stress if i accept that there is a stress and i make them to feel that there is a stress to so try to overcome it then every time he goes on uh, repeating that with the quantizing this whether the stress has reduced or not reduced or not something like that so when stress is not there then there is nothing to be reduced or increased so you go in that approach is what i usually counsel my patients in that way and it has given me results also many a times but of course handling this type of stress related things is not so easy one sittings they will uh, feel come back with a happy note that saying that everything is fine everything was fine but for the next sitting in, uh, suddenly they come with no my stress has increased so these are very quite common in a um, what is called psychosomatic disorders so we need to understand that uh, physiology and pathology and of course counseling has a very important role to play here to relieve the stress so that that things can be set it right and you you said that the agni correction is very important that sets the pitta in the right uh, you know at optimum levels which addresses both the physical and the mental components but sometimes it so happens that uh, some some clients with anxiety or depression they will have you know in, increased hunger they'll be eating uh, more but still uh, they will be having a depression uh, or you know any underlying uh, psychiatric problems so how to address there where uh, you know agni is apparently pathologically high when you are supposed to bring a change in the mindset of a patient we need to initiate or trigger a new point in his brain he comes to us with all his history and he will be giving the details that how he is feeling what he is doing and how his weight has increased and how his voracious eating has increased because of this and he is feeling depressed so many things but in that situation i try to put it a new uh, point in his brain that see with this there is a new problem so i suggest a new problem or a new solution to that and i make them to feel you just concentrate on this part like example if you are eating more so your body weight is increasing you have to reduce your body weight you start walking you start jogging so reduce eating this type of and reduce the quantum of intake by measuring the things so like that i'll try to move on to the counseling part and reduce their intake and all those things of course it takes some uh, quite a number of uh, sittings it's not uh, simply happens in one sitting so this is the way we need to counsel them and address those uh, tiny issues associated with that then slowly it comes into the right way while you you were teaching us in back in bms you were explaining about a doctor who would uh, for any kind of conditions uh, that the doctor would go for anulomana first because you know there there can be avarna or there can be you know stuck doshas in the stomach or you know blocked stroses so anulomana as a as a primary uh, way of treating uh, you know as a primary thing and then the you know other uh, disease based uh, medicines are given so probably even that strategy would also work in stress also definitely because we all know that in our body vata is the one which is having the capacity to move from here to there and even the capacity to carry the things to other places even the kapha pitta or whatever other things are they are all lame they can be moved by the influence of vata so that's why even uh, many a times in many diseases we find that adavanta madhye cha marutam paridakshita hai it is said in the beginning or end try to maintain the vata vata is very important so here also if udana vata i mean apana vata has been made to move in apana direction automatically rest of the vatas will be doing their function normally 
If Apanavata moves in Urdhvagati and becomes Udana, then everything will settle in a disrespective manner and the things will go in a very varied things and patient will have a lot, lot of issues. So first thing is we need to make a way for that Apanavata Pradesha to be clear and continuously it should be in a moving in a right direction. So Apana should be made Apanugadaha. That's the reason I say used to say that Anulomana should be the right choice and usually whenever the patient comes with a Pithaja disorder or Vataja disorder, usually this is the very right way of doing it. Anulomana as a part of the therapy, if you introduce it, then slowly the things will settle on, even the Kapha will come to play in the later part of the treatment. But first in the beginning, Vata if it is addressed properly, then followed by that Pitta and automatically Kapha also fall in line. And to address the address the stress, it can be for you know a psychiatric psychosomatic disorder, or it can be right out a classical uh, case of depression or anxiety. So, what are the major uh, herbs or major medicines that you use on a regular basis? Usually, I do use with the Brahmi, Shankapushpi, and to some extent Jetamamsi. These are my usual choice of drugs. Of course, many a times. We will go for a combinations of um, Brahmi Vati or Brahmi Grita or Saraswata Arista like that. But usually the main ingredients will be either it will be Manduka Parani that is um, Centella Asiatica or Brahmi Bakopa Manari or even Jetamamsi, Nardostachus Jetamamsi. These are the important drugs usually I go with that. And in, in order to improve the concentration and that part comes then I usually go with the Jyotishmati. Celestress paniculators. So usually these drugs will be given either in the form of Gritha and best choice would be if it is given along in the form of a Gritha that will be a very good one because Gritha has a peculiar character of crossing the blood brain barrier and it will be the drugs will be carried to the higher centers. So that's the reason I prefer Brahmi Gritha and such type of Grithas in a combination. Yeah, Gritha makes so perfect sense that uh, uh, you know, for Urmada and Apasmara, especially in the Charak Samhita chapters, most of the medicines that he has explained there are Gritha based. So uh, that's the reason. That's the reason because it is able to carry that uh, medicines to the uh, places where it is required. Actually, that's the reason. And even um, Gritha itself is also once again a media dravya. It's a basic nature of Gritha itself is media. When that such a Gritha is being made, uh, samskarita are um, fortified with the herbs which are having a special potency to act on the brain tissues even to the improve the serotonin level or even the receptor levels definitely it will going to help in a large way and, and also uh, you know Gritha does Deepana as well as Pitta Shamana both at the same time do you feel and what is the regular dose of herbal ghee that you would prescribe on a general uh, basis i mean for a patient uh, uh, shamana dose as in uh, shamana dosage usually 10 to 15 ml on empty stomach usually i go with that at one time for an adult who is above around 40 to 50 i mean 50 to 60 kgs of body weight in that sense usually i'll go with the 10 to 15 ml of gritha usually has it uh, ever happened that uh, uh, you know the patient was not able to digest the Gritha, so you you added any like Chitrakadvati or any Agni Deepana? No, 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 I usually I won't do that. Simply with the dosage pattern only that things will settle down usually because Gritha itself is Agni Deepaka in nature and it is definitely uh, causes a lot of uh, in uh, Deepana purposes will be met with uh, by simply putting one or two spoons of ghee. That's the reason even in many our old age uh, home practices always they said while eating before the first morsel of the food should be mixed with the ghee and eaten so that's the reason uh, that is uh, that's been quoted agni uh, samvardhana or the agni vardhana is done by ghee in a very large way and it is uh, even seen outside also in the atmosphere whenever there is a fire if you put a ghee or a spoon of ghee on that it readily catches a fire and flyer becomes inflamed more or hyped so that's the reason we need to go for uh, Grutas in that Shamana or uh, that dosage 
and that is not going to hamper any digestion or it doesn't may take much time to get digested definitely it will be digested and we will be deciding the dosage based on the agni of the person so i did never felt any time to add anything to that thing improve the these uh, digestive things to be added extra and, uh, along with these grithas yeah giving medicines before uh, food uh, when the already the digestion is kind of kindled makes so much sense and uh, uh, probably there is a reason why even hingwasaka churna is given with the first morsel of uh, food mixed with ghee so there also it, it makes sense then coming to this jata mamsi uh, do you have kind of a checklist where you would prescribe this or you will be careful uh, while prescribing it no usually i prescribe jata mamsi in the form of a tablet it comes with uh, around uh, 250 mg of uh, actives in that so that type of uh, tablet i usually go with one to two tablets per day at night usually it will also induce a good sleep and even all disturbances will be clear because night sleep if properly if it takes taken place then automatically many things will fall in right line so that's the reason many attempts that's what our vayupastamba uh, has been very clearly said ahara nidra brahmacharya that's the reason if nidra is properly happens in the night that to bhutadhatri that's a reason which has been mentioned as bhutadhatri so if happens in a proper way definitely the things will be in a very right sense that's why i go with um, getamamsi with one or two tablets at night and in the form of a tablet it is available for me so i am using it we covered the counseling tips in a brief there are any like a uh, standard go to counseling tips that you would give to any patient with stress now as such you know it is only a customized one for what reason they have come to me accordingly i will suggest them and first thing was they wanted to from me is that and some assurance so usually i give some sometimes it may be a false assurance also that is also required so we, i give assurance to that everything will be right said right you just take this medicine you will be good so that assurance of my doctor definitely has a, a positive role to play in the treatment in the counseling coming to the next question this came in the whatsapp group chat how shamana sneha is used in psoriasis whether it will increase agni or it will, whether that will cause symptoms related to itching so let me simplify the question uh, it's a little bit complex use of sneha in skin disorders see very clear we are selecting a shamana oshadi in case of skin disorders in a very typical manner and the drug of selection or the yoga selection would be a very clearly mahatikta grutha or panchatikta gulugrutha so when we use panchatikta gulugrutha or mahatikta grutha it is itself is doing shamana of the condition involved or the doshas involved second thing they are in the form of grutha so when it is in the grutha format definitely it will going to increase the agni it won't suppress the agni this is the point number one second thing we are giving in a shamana dosage definitely it will not hamper the agni third point is that we are using such a drug combination or yoga which is pointed or aimed at the disease itself so definitely it is not going to increase the symptoms of the diseases so that's why i never come across in my any of the patients of psoriasis when i use the shamana sneha continuously a uh, repetition of itching or something has arise because of this i never come across so i don't uh, agree or i don't uh, accept that that things will happen because when you use mahatikta grutha or panchatikta gulu grutha we never come across such a situation in which skin conditions you will go for herbal ghee as the medicine form or in which conditions you would avoid herbal ghee and go for like kashaya tablets and whatever what else as such there is no hard and fast rule that it should not be done even all the three doshas involved skin conditions we can go for the grutas the only provided ideal uh, situation would be any vataja dominant or vataja condition resulting in a skin condition where rukshata is more when there is involvement of uh, I mean, particularly vata in such a way that it is causing lot of dryness and wasting in such conditions i usually prefer this grutha should be in the format otherwise if there is a oozing and such type of things are there then amrutadi guggulu would be the right one uh, where i will go for that or even panchatikta guggulu i will go for that once the oozing stops itching stops then i shift on to grutha format
the reason why you are stressing on this mahatiktaka krita or panchatiktaka google krita is that bitter will do the uh, shamana also we generally think that the bitters are more anti bacterial in nature so what is the thing it, it is not like that because we know that uh, kushta or the general skin conditions is involvement of vata pitta kapha as well as there are dushyas rasa rakta mamsa medha and lasika these all seven factors are involved in that for, for the formation of the uh, diseases in a various permutation and combination so in that whichever is involved accordingly we will select the drugs in the best formats so that depends on the presenting complaint in a skin disorders whether the uh, presenting complaint is itching then we accordingly plan the treatment to reduce the itching complaint in complaint is on itching then most of the important things we concentrate on using khadira haridra then all panchatikta this type of drugs which will definitely going to reduce this then it not only reduces the kapha it also reduces the pitta so this where kapha pitta combined any diseases are there then also these are the drugs of choice and most of the time this panchatikta gulugrutha or mahatikta gurutha these type of combinations are vyadi pratyanika yogas they are having specific phalashruti also based on that we use these drugs in all sort of people all sort of prakruti it doesn't mean that it should be given in a particular type of thing no it is almost in most of the patients it will be useful only thing is that we need to understand if there is a excessive oozing we should not use grithas once there is a dryness or when there is a burning sensation when there is a pus formation then we can go for to some extent i'm going with that question that has come that in in the shamana sneha when we are giving like herbal gees when we are giving yeah uh, is, is there any chance that it will increase the kapha dosha so much so that Your client may generate itching as a symptom that may not be possibility that's what i explain because first thing is even though gritha is a vichit pratyarth dravya even though it is having all the madhur rasa madhur vipak and everything it is agni vardaka and it is not kapha vardaka to such an extent which will cause a disease second thing we are giving such a samskarita gritha which is having samskarana with various pitta and kapha shamana aushadis there so when kapha and pitta shamana aushadis are in the form of grutha and we are using it even in a shamana format or even in shodhana format it won't increase the lakshanas of the disease it cannot be and uh, regarding the previous topic of stress there's a question here uh, hello sir can we give brahmi grutha in patients who are already on anti psychotic drugs we expect the results this is one of the common things and most of the antidepressants and they they will have their own sort of side effects like a constipation a severe aggressive weight gain but those medicines will be controlling neurohormones to some extent in most of the cases if they are like withdrawn all of a sudden to introduce ayurvedic drugs uh, the withdrawal effects of these uh, antipsychotic drugs modern antipsychotic drugs will have their own uh, effects so it's a complex issue how to go about it sir see that's a, the beauty of ayurveda very clearly we are given the context how to handle the things how to imbibe the new ones and how to leave the old ones that's what the ritus and this charya has been explained similarly we have to do here also without simply disturbing the, the drugs which is already being supported to the body and the person is already uh, taken a support of that those drugs we need to just taper those doses with addition of our drugs then slowly shift on the things and it may take some weeks to some months many a times depending upon person to person and case to case so we need to understand in such a way that simply just by giving one grutha one shot uh, things will be settled down no no such things will be there because certain these type of things are comes under the manovyadis it takes a longer duration to settle down so we don't we can wait and continuously these in medha rasayana type of dravyas which is given slowly they pick up their um, speed and they try to maintain the normalcy and the person will also will develop a tendency to become normal slowly on a longer run when he consumes continuously that's what he said satata abhyasa shilana that should be there with these type of medicines if that continuously these medicines are taken in a uh, prescribed therapeutic dosage definitely it is going to help 
in a long way especially i mean there is a huge scope of ayurveda inter intervention uh, with respect to the side effects of modern antidepressant and uh, anxiolytic and other other drugs where you know they go with uh, i mean they will have patients often have constipation and uh, weight gain etc uh, symptoms next is can brahmi and panchatitta gugulu grita be used for shodhana or they are more effective as a shamana treatment i think it's a, it's a combined both of them as in somewhere brahmi we are talking about regarding the stress and panchatitta and these things are regarding we are talking about the skin diseases so okay uh, for shodhana purposes we can use in a skin conditions usually that is a usual protocol what we follow any disease which is finalized or diagnosed and when we subject the patient for the shodhana purposes then we try to select those type of uh, yogas which are used as a shamana aushadi in the same conditions in a larger doses for the purpose of snehana before the shodhana in those conditions so here panchadikta gulugrita can also be used as a shodhana um, in, uh, for the sh snehana purposes before the shodhana in case of skin disorders whereas brahmi grita can be used as a sneha dravya or a snehana purposes if you are going to use a, the person for a manovikara you are going for a shodhana karma there then brahmi grita can be used or mahakalyanika grita can be used mahapaishachika grita can be used there are plenty of such things and panchatitta grita is one of the difficult to consume type of herbal ki it's so, a highly bitter it's a highly bitter ghee and that's the reason many times the patient on kind of to consuming this they vomit because of that non palatability of the um, components and yogas and it is highly bitterous the name is just it is mahatikta and panchatikta gulugrita both are tikta tikta is nothing but bitter so how do you like counsel the patient to take it there is no um, hard and fast rule that uh, we should counsel them i suggest them this is the thing you have to take it because uh, usually when i subject a patient of that nature for the shodhana he will be suffering a lot from its diseases and he will be ready to accept what the medication or what is the procedure what i allow him to or, uh, ask him to do it definitely they will follow it the simple reason is they are fed up with the irritation or reaching or with the diseases and their lot more uh, sufferings when compared to that uh, this um, bitterness is not a big issue the bitterness is a issue only in those patients those who not taken or consumed such type of bitter say earlier they will find a difficulty in following it but there is no other way that bitterness has to be taken because bitterness has a, its a role to play i can't mask it by you giving some sugar to that or something like that it won't do the purpose and uh, this kerala ayurveda has gt capsule gugulu titta uh, capsule uh, at least i mean if somebody is i mean this uh, this is a new trend now in the last 10 years which has come up is to make capsules out of thaila sangrutha so started with shiravala thaila then you know maharaja prasarna thaila gandha thaila capsules have come and now slowly they are moving into the grutas and turning it into capsule as well in uh, our uh, pentacare we have got a special group of drugs that is called as a band sealed capsules this has been introduced to our market by our company long back and we are the only people we have this in uh, hard gelatin capsule these grutas are there we have come out with almost 11 varieties of them like um, brahat falagrita with the fortification we have come out with uh, name as um, repromed and uh, this panchatikta gulugrita we have come out in the name of it uh, just with little bit uh, fortification in the form of pro skin we have got um, yimna we have got danvantara we got chirabala we got um, spine act the nirgundi grita in the form of that so like that there are plenty of uh, such preparations are there wherein we have made a, it's, it's a hard gelatin capsule filled with a grita and it is a band sealed in a new technique and we are introduced to the market and it is going on that is a other option where but when we go for uh, shodhana purposes when we increase slowly step by step we will vardhamana reethi we will increase the step uh, step up the dosage for format for the snehana like from from beginning 20 ml then 30 ml 40 ml such type of thing cannot be done with the capsule formation it is not possible in capsule hardly it may take about 1 uh, to 2 grams not more than that so for diabetes and hypertension 
are they reversible because a lot of diet programs are available which are promising to completely cure them uh, which are even conducted even by the allopathic doctors so are they curable uh, how to go about it see we need to understand uh, basic things about this ayurveda speaks about uh, 20 varieties of prameha in those 20 varieties uh, 10 varieties are kafaja prameha 6 are pittaja and 4 are vataja and very clearly said kafaja prameha is curable sukasadhya whereas pittaja prameha is yapya and vataja prameha are asadhya so we if we don't understand this and simply say that presently what is the trend is patient blood sugar level is checked and it is said as diabetic that is a wrong method of doing it because Ayurveda very clearly speaks about something which is required to the body is being thrown out of the body through the urine. So it's a glucose which is required to the body being thrown out of the body through the urine. Then only we call it as Prameha. Until then, if sugar doesn't come in the urine, it is not considered as Prameha. So what presently they are all doing is they are just simply checking the blood sugar level and branding if it is beyond the particular limit then they are branding it as a diabetic and treating it. But technically speaking all those people wherein the increased blood sugar is there but there is no sugar in urine then they are all pre-diabetic. They are not the diabetic persons. They are pre-diabetic and these pre-diabetic people can be rectified by the methods of medication, exercises, diet control and many factors will come into play. Second thing, if anybody can cure a diabetics, then definitely that person will get a Nobel Prize. Ayurveda also very clearly suggested there are eight Mahagadas that's called Ashta Mahagada. In the Ashta Mahagada, Prameha is also one of them. And when we are unable to treat this pre-diabetic stage in a proper manner, our patient doesn't take care of himself or herself, then ultimately he may land up in Madhumeha. Then it is almost irreversible. So only those things are reversible which are in pre-diabetic state. So it is not once it is completely diabetes a branded or a classical method of understanding where there is a sugar present even in the urine as well as in the increase in the blood, then such a type of patients are branding it as a cure. This is a totally uh, at present situation is not possible. What I can say, we cannot uh, label it as a, we can cure, we can manage, we can treat, we can bring it to the normalcy. But so after that also, we need to be give a medication to sustain the result. Otherwise, once again, he will go beyond the limit. So that is not the truth that will be curing a condition. We don't use the term cure for this. This is only manageable, treatable, controllable. And, and also the diet and lifestyle with, with that, the, the blood sugar level may come back to normalcy, but there are so many factors involved in diabetes. The stress is there, uh, you know, the sleep patterns, the body uh, physical activity. Suppose the client is traveling and, uh, you know, he is not able to uh, do the regular like, uh, regular exercise and then again the blood sugar shoots up and there is it is a category of madhumeha with uh, you know considerable uh, definitive diagnosis of diabetes has happened uh, you know i the medicines play a very important role along with the diet and lifestyle to keep the symptoms along with the blood sugar under check definitely ahara aushada and vyayama all the three factors will definitely pay, play a role and all the three are collectively playing the role that is very important we, we cannot simply just simply by doing one thing just i'm not i don't want to take the medicine i'm just doing the kind of restriction on diet and uh, walking and everything that may reduce to some extent but the conversion of those things are helping the uh, conversion of glucose to glycogen or something like that or glucose metabolism is being hampered to support the system some medication is required but it can be postponed the labeling of a person as a diabetic can be postponed from the earlier day he only catches it up and uh, rectification started with these type of things if this is done then question will doesn't arise so then automatically his regularly activity and all those things are there then no question of uh, getting a diabetes but ayurveda very clearly says swapna sukham asya sukham 
so very clearly one who does the swapna sukha and asya sukha definitely lead, uh, land in trouble in diabetic so if you um, control on that uh, swapna sukha and asya sukha automatically things will settle down no question of that uh, things will uh, once again reappear once again reappearing of the lakshanas can only happen if you are once again not following the system which is been put to you or uh, prescribed to you that which has brought your abnormal sugar level to normal c once it is normal c is achieved then you have left the things everything and once again it is going back to the place from where it is started up yeah as very beautifully our acharya sir explained asasuka eating uncontrollably uh, irrespective of agni and sapnasuka having sedentary lifestyle as you know two main contributing factors for uh, you know as two main nidana sort of causative factors for diabetes next there is question from can brahmi grita or saraswata grita be added to the diet like 5 to 10 ml for the fatty liver obese diabetic kapha prakriti person with stress and anxiety and memory issue see and it's it's a wrong selection of the drug why you would want to select a brahmi grita or something like that for just 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 for the sake of fatty liver or something like that See, fatty liver is once again a big issue nowadays. British School of uh, Surgery as well as Hepatology says that there is no need to treat uh, have, uh, fatty liver grade one. The very simple reason is previously we are using a, a probes in ultrasonography, which is not so specific. But now there we are using a very high sensitive and resonant um, uh, information. we are getting that's why almost everybody will going to get into a category called fatty liver grade 1 fatty liver but it says that grade 1 fatty liver is only just a alarming symptom but no need to give any medication for that just to rectify the way of living the things will settle down for the purpose of giving any medication of these type of grithas and all those things no need to use them as a diet it is their medicine prescribed for the purpose of medicine and it should be taken as medicine not as a diet suppose the client has any liver issues do you go still with the herbal ghees yes definitely it is very clearly said in ayurveda never we never say that grita should not be given to liver disorder patients we have got lot of preparations like panchatikta gudu grita shatavaryadi grita even ashwagandha grita can be given in all these condition only provided patient has lost tissues it has become kshaya or kshata due to the liver disorders i use in my almost all cases of uh, liver disorders with ascites and all those things once ascites is removed and he becomes lean and thin then i start him with grithas particularly shatavaryadi gritha i start to them and it has given a very good result they will uh, regain slowly their lost body weight and particularly for a fatty liver and these conditions it is because of the rich glucose what you are consuming reduce the intake of glucose carbohydrates so if that is reduced and do certain exercises don't eat extra adhyashana should be avoided if you avoid all these factors definitely the things will settle down and no need to use brahmi grutha and these things as a diet component it is a medicine component it should be used as a medicine and Uh, going moving on to the next question the decision of shodhana or decision to uh, go for panchakarma versus maintaining uh, or you know treat, treating with just shamana aushadi so decision of shamana versus shodhana how to take it what are the factors to consider where to go for shamana where to go for shodhana your thoughts on those so usually very practically i go with this not from the textual things only certain information is from the text i first try to diagnose the condition and i try to understand whether it is bahu dosha jalingani very clearly said if there is a disturbance or the manifestation of the disease or condition which is having a copious increase or the abundant increase of the doshas which is needs to be expelled out then i feel if the person is having nidra nasha ati nidra gaurava staulya so these type of lakshanas if it is there pidakas and oozing and depending upon conditions if it is in a profuse manner if it is there then i select that patient that 
is capable or he should be suggested or subjected for shodhana therapy next comes the play of patience when i suggest to you go for the shodhana then the patient should be in a financially well and able to purchase that product or such service many a times it so happens they are hesitant with the with methodology what we describe and what we do how the panchakarmas are done they are reluctant to that second thing many a times financial constraints definitely put them back on the things that they won't come for the shodhana so in such scenario we may have to go for the shamana but if a krusha patient is there alpa um, balayukta patient is there then but still the roga lakshanas are very um, prominent he is a suitable candidate for the uh, shodhana chikitsa but his bala is very much less so in that type of patient are emaciated jab uh, patients in those we need to go for sadhya vamana sadhya virochana like that in a short duration in a short span we need to go for a repeated repeated cleansing or shodhana therapy or detoxification therapy we don't want to go for a very classical therapy in those type of patients this is what we i usually adopting while giving say sadhya vamana or sadhya virochana do you ask the client to come to your center or you try to manage them uh, at their home itself no these the procedures are done on the base of uh, day care uh, facilities uh, i don't allow them to uh, take these things at their home uh, they have to come at least for one day on the day of uh, procedure at least one day they should be here and because we need to uh, check on the vitals if something goes wrong then it will be difficult for to handle because patient will be somewhere else and we don't know what he has consumed how much he has consumed it is not monitored so i don't allow that to happen usually we will go for the at least a one day and a day care procedure we will ask them to come and will the things will be done yes and in a like a, a high profile treatments like vamana or virachana the especially even if it is virachana also there can be so many things which can go wrong and we need to i have a check on the client definitely many a times we will have a um, excessive vamana or um, virachana if taken place then we may land up in uh, electrolyte disbalance and imbalance and all those things will come into play and many a times we need to give a little bit extra caution and some other than alternative methods to overcome those things as uh, suddenly patient may have a severe cramping in the abdomen so many things are there even uh, sometimes uh, while vomiting uh, pittant lakshana should be there and we need to stop there but uh, the medicine is uh, continuously still acting and uh, later the patient has vomited the blood also a little bit of it uh, so all these things happens so that's why reason that we need to be very careful in handling these uh, detoxification processes and of course uh, that is a quite challenging area but it can be done in a very successfully and in a very systematic manner the question has come in the comment can clostridium infection be treated with herbal medicines one of my patients has clostridium infection this person is not responding to any of the ayurveda treatment for eczema so no it's not possible we need to have a specific information what sort of clostridium infection it is whether it is clostridium tetani or something like that i don't know what type of clostridium it is or what sort of presenting complaints are then only we can give a suggestion on that what can be done is there a treatment for amebiasis patient is having recurrent amebiasis infection yeah that is there for uh, amebiasis we have a very good uh, treatment protocol we use uh, jirakadarista we use uh, dadimavaleha we need uh, and use uh, mustakarista and such type of drugs are there even the rasaparpati is also there that can be used in those conditions even takrarista is one of the choice uh, usually we use that according to the condition and of course a lot of uh, food restrictions will be there and uh, we treat them with these type of drugs and they have a amebia i mean kutaja is there even uh, kutaja ganavati is there kutaja rista is there kutaja valeha is there bilva valeha is there so all these things we we can have a option and definitely it is going to re- give a result uh, while telling patients about patya or apatya whether do you consider only the disease based patya or apatya or do you also take caloric calorific values and nutritional values into consideration while forming uh, while formulating a diet protocol usually i don't take that because patya and apatya concept is very much primordial from the ayurveda 
and patya means which is uh, good to the pathas are the channels the shrotasas inside the body so anything which is good to the condition accordingly the things will be taken care of and how much should be taken what should be taken it depends on one person's agni and his role and if he's a madhyama vayaska with a middle aged person with a good agni then he can digest many things so i don't um, go for that only where there is a person is obese or something like that or some calorie issues are really causing problem then i need to check on that otherwise generally i go by the principles of ayurveda where very clearly in which disease or which bodily conditions or which prakruti what should be taken what should not be taken so based on that patya and apatya i used to go for that and usually i don't go for the caloric value because uh, you may be giving a lot of medication or even uh, iron containing material but still patient is unable to imbibe that uh, iron and increase his hemoglobin content why you are giving full calorie no whatever the require was there so it doesn't mean that whatever the calorie you are giving or whatever the quality it is there it is basically the agni present inside that in the form of uh, some enzymes or in the form of some digestive fire or some uh, receptors that needs to catch all these uh, elements present in the diet then only it will be imbibed and taken to the place where it is required so otherwise simply giving or uh, filling the system with uh, loaded uh, things with the system with all this calorie and all this content doesn't make any sense many times we have seen that people we feed our children a lot but still he is not uh, putting on his weight doctor many as time patient comes with a complaint so does calorie in that sense doesn't play a there only calorie values will be considered when agni is proper if agni is proper then calorie will automatically taken care of and, and also sometimes uh, it, it has happened with me that we will go with like ayurveda based disease specific patya or patya apatya and if if i try to mix up taking into consideration the calorie or the nut- nutritional value and then uh, try to uh, incorporate into the patient's diet protocol it becomes very much confusing what to have what not to have uh, and it, it becomes ultimately a big mix up of kichdis so better to stick to only one line of uh, a traditional ayurvedic line of disease based diet rather than trying, trying too many things at a time so that's the reason i said because patya and apatya is a concept of ayurveda when very clearly the patya means patasya hitam the one which is good to the pata pata means inside the channels are these shrotasas margas the micro nutrition channels which carry these information and the uh, energy levels so we need to be very good to them so we don't want to put any hardship to those patas that's the reason whichever is good to the condition whichever is not good to the condition will be prescribed based on the technicality of ayurveda and not from the point of nutritional or calorie value sir please say something about h pylori infection treatment with ayurveda Once again, Haritaki is one of the drug, as well as Chitraka is one of the drug, uh, which is uh, very good in uh, H. pylori. So, what we can go for is, in case of H. pylori, if a patient agni is moderate, then we can go for Chitraka, Haritaki, and Vidangarista as a combination. And if a patient is having a lot of acidity due to H. pylori and causing a burning sensation as a striking feature, then we need to go for kamaduga with mauktika kamaduga rasa with mauktika along with this um, chitraka haritaki and vidangarista then the things will settle down if the client has like hatch pallari with burning sensation and all will not this chitraka cause aggravation of uh, the uh, no, that chitraka haritaki is in the form of leha so it is in the form of leha it is not in the form of powder or anything like that so it won't instantaneously cause any irritation there or anything like that how much duration time is required to uh, clear of the infection usually takes from person to person is different depending upon the quantum of infection what and how long this person is suffering from so it may take me from one month to three months yeah and usually in h pylori case cases uh, do you prefer panthakarma over just the shamana aushadis usually i go with shamana aushadis in those cases the, i don't go for with panchakarma and even last we had one question in that the diabetes and the hypertension both were there i just skipped the hypertension hypertension also there is um, reversal of hypertension the people are claiming it once again the hypertension is caused due to various reasons maybe due to uh, 
um, aging, maybe due to the peripheral resistance, maybe due to the cardiac involvement, and once again the stress factor. So we can reduce the stress factor uh, issues. We can reduce the circulation to some extent, and thereby we can bring it to the normalcy. If you are unnecessarily stressed up due to any reasons, and there will be adrenaline rush, definitely there will be rise of uh, hypertension. Uh, the things will be blood pressure will be increased. So we need to understand those things. Only those areas where we can keep calm the patient in, uh, calmness, and we try to under analyze these uh, peripheral resistances. And to overcome that, allowing regular uh, walking and all these other things, definitely we can restrict or bring back these person to normalcy area. But once again, just like diabetes, we don't use a term cure for these type of conditions. It can only be managed. So can all grithas be used for nausea or only selected ones? See, there is a area for everything. We can't simply all the grita can be used. Some grithas may be irritating. For example, if I prepare a chitraka grita, can it I put it onto the nose? That may not be suitable. But can it not be used in the nasya? Yes, it can be. So all it is a customized one. But in a general thing, there are certain suitable uh, grithas which can only be used for the nasya. So that only we have to take it. Like Dhanvantram grita, to some extent we can go for it. Kshirabala 101, we can go for it. There are specific Maha Narayana Tela, we can go for it. Brahmi Grita, we can go for it. So there are specific Gritas and Tailas where which can be used for this purposes. Otherwise, simply any Grita can be used. If you come, for example, Kshira Shatfala Grita, it is indicated is somewhere else and we are putting it in nose means definitely it is not going to help anywhere and it is going to cause even some side effects and problems. So it doesn't mean that any Grita can be used in anywhere. And usually for especially when there is nasya, if you take up the example of anutaila, it, it, usually it's a healthy combination of uh, like usnavirya herbs and cold potency herbs. So uh, it's some some balancing they have made, and you know the herbs which act mainly on the head and neck region, they are specifically used for you know formulating such nasya medicines. See, the beauty of Ayurveda is like that. Our acharyas have given all those things which were their final product of their experimentation. They didn't write their failures, never uh, given the idea that how many times they tried this one and to come to this conclusion or to come make it this combination. We don't find any information of that nature. Ultimately, the ready-made thing was given to us. So it is out of lot, lot of permutation and combination and various trials. Definitely they have all done these things and then only they come to the conclusion. Of course, their methodology of understanding the things and their pramanas and the pratyaksha, anumana, all these characters they used to play and ultimately they have brought it. But they never written that we have tried so many patients on these, these things and we failed in these things. And ultimately this, uh, this is the final combination which cracked the things and that's why we are presenting it. No, no such information of that methodology is there in their narration of the things. Ultimately, which one was beautiful and which one was uh, beneficial to the mankind, the some things say directly, they are given that uh, things, uh, combinations to us in the form of a, a information or a knowledge. Thank you, Guru sir, for guiding us all uh, through this uh, science of Ayurveda practice. See you all in the next Sunday. Thank you very much, Guru sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Janardhan.